Okay, Napoleon, Ridley Scott, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Um, I was actually looking forward to this movie, you know, really known for his tactics, right? He was the conqueror of Europe for a good chunk of time. And Joaquin Phoenix and Ridley Scott, we've seen Ridley Scott do some crazy, amazing, you know, epic biopics. And, you know, yeah, biopics. Yeah. So I was really excited for this. And yes, there was a good amount of action in here that I was digging, man. I was in love with it. The Austerlitz place. It looks good. His, his, that was his crown jewel, which is, I guess that's why they put it in there. Right. He's known for that victory. Right. Had great scenery, great cinematography. It was really big, epic. When you see cavalry in the background, in the dude, the it was massive. You got like Lord of the Rings vibes and it just made you like your jaw just dropped. Um, and yeah, you see him in different parts of the world in Egypt and uh, 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 Russia and everything. But most of this movie was about him and Josephine, which is his wife. And it really is kind of based all around that where, uh, you know, some historians had problems with this movie because they're like, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. He didn't leave that place because of that thing. That wasn't the reason. And really, Scott gets butt hurt when he has any criticism about his movies, even if it's justified like this one is. And there's parts in here where he leaves certain countries because he sees that his wife is cheating on him. Well, that's the case, right? Where Egypt was spanking him. And Along he, with England. Right. Know, it wasn't just them, it was the natives with English help. And they just. And when he gets spanked, he runs. And we didn't really get to see that part he either. He left his men all to die there. Right. In real life. Same thing with Russia, which, again, barely got anything. Right. Uh, we didn't really get to see him be the greatest tactician except for Not once. Really, yeah. Except for one scene, which was. What Austerlitz one, where right. they fire the um, cannons on the And it ice. was awesome when we got to see that. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, I guess we got some Waterloo. Right. Um, but. Infantry squares, barely. Other than that, we didn't really get to see his great tactician brain. We didn't really get to see yeah, there's any multiple. Of that. They should have had multiple. You know, I do like how they added, like, context sometimes. Certain scenes will tell you what day it is or what year, how many people died there, and stuff like that. I like that in a movie. If right. you're going to do a historical biopic, I'm okay with going, hey, 48,000 people die in just what, this one day. And you're like, okay. Crazy. Oh, crazy, crap. bloody. And. There's some things that I learned in here that is uh, is historically accurate, like the messengers who have two horses, so they can jump in between the horses, so one horse can rest while he can keep going with the other it's one. It's also just in case one craps out because it didn't right. happen. Right, and then you have that one extra horse. Like I said, great action, but we did uh, dwell too much on the Josephine relationship uh, part of his story, and I don't even think she had that big of an impact on him. I know he's probably going off the Josephine... He's going off the of letters, yeah. right? Which I could have swore, which is fine. Could have swore that she like rarely opened them. I could have swore she did not care for him, and you kind of see it in the movie. But I thought her whole thing was she just piled up the letters that Napoleon sent her and never really opened them. I guess occasionally would write back and stuff, but I think all women in his life never really care, care for him. Um, so they did get a few things right in here where they do show Napoleon as the small man syndrome. Like you see him being insecure. insecure. He's egotistical. He never really says he's wrong. There's a scene where he's talking to a bunch of kids bragging about how he never makes mistakes, but his generals after below got, him after he just got spanked. Captured. Yeah, and you know, but the generals below him aren't as great and brilliant as him, so that's why he loses. It's not his fault. It's his stupid officers marshals yeah right and the kids are like eating it up and there's even another part where he's asking little girls history questions here and there saying who burned moscow to the ground they go uh the russians did to get the french out of there and he goes uh, who told you that and she's like it's common knowledge yeah. um in which so, he even had a hard time believing because he knew it wasn't him that started the fire but right. when it was happening they're like who started this and like right. they didn't he goes no i didn't who started this it's like and they're out thinking no they really did out thinker um, and he, he he doesn't like that. His relationship with Josephine, uh, I guess, was interesting, I guess, in a way, but didn't really care about it. I wanted to see the Conqueror, not the love affair. Which know, was the, cringy the whole time. Very, and there was a fair amount of comedy in here, and a lot of it was Joaquin Phoenix. and some Awkward, of it, cringy comedy. Some of it was funny, and some of it was cringy. And... Uh, uh, the sex scenes in here were a bit both cringy and hysterical. 
Um, Give me Inglorious Bastard vibes. But, you know, that. she's roasting him, he's roasting her, he's he's being, uh, she's being unfaithful, so is he, and he's being manipulative and evil um, and insecure. I feel like really should have stayed more accurate to history and include more uh, 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 people throughout history who's in his ranks, who is Tom X. Alexander Dumont, whose son made the Three Musketeers. He's and he's barely and he literally walks to the screen. And says like, like three guy. words, right? There's your guy in there. He could have had a cool scene, showed a little bit more. Oh, my son Alexander, he's a little artist. He is. He's a little writer. I don't know something. Um, show him go to war because he was a warrior, right? Too. Like he was in the military. He was in the Egyptian campaign too. I'll shoot you. I don't care if you're taller than me, stupid. That would have been an interesting. If you're gonna make scene. him look like a little bitch, then yeah, that would have been a great. Oh man! Timely moment Can you that we needed on screen. Thomas Alexander Dumont looking down at Napoleon, saying, "You are being stupid." And then he goes, "What? You think you're better than me because you're taller and hot? I'll shoot you!" Like that would be perfect. Such a it'd be funny, story too. and it would be it well. One, it was it happened. Yeah, funny. Historically accurate, and we in, in the uh, present can go great. That awesome. That moment existed, and we can all laugh at him hundreds of years <laughs> later. Ha ha, Given the context of the world back then and the world now. Right. Especially the background of Alexander Dumont himself, who's Haitian, Frank, Haiti, right. the whole thing. So, right. It was a great slap in the face to them, just like Haiti was a slap in the face to them. So there was a lot of stuff that they could have put in there, and they just didn't. Left out um, Spain completely, which is fine. You can't have everything. But if you want to cut out half of the boring, cringy love stuff i get it you can have that part in there but it didn't really show who he like actually was right as a, only really scott could have done an epic movie like this at this kind of scale and it's just moments of him you know uh, getting made fun of by a british cartoonist yeah about how he's small and his women always like cheat on him and stuff and kind of rely too much on that i like the politics back and forth between the two i thought there was a lot of missed opportunity between yeah. the one-on-one -on -one talking back and forth with people. There are parts in here where the politics does seem very interesting. And one gets a little reminiscent of January 6th where they do the coup, right? The coup d'etat. And the parliament pretty much weren't having it. So they were kicking the shit out of Napoleon. And he ran out of like a little bitch. And then he came in with guns and said, okay, let's have a vote. And then he uh, slowly but surely starts taking power. And then eventually does take power. So there was a lot of interesting parts in there where in Parliament, back in the day, you literally were just just hitting each other. Why you did know? you commit suicide? Because they knew what they were going to do. Yeah, they were him. probably going to tear him up. I, the thing that they did in here, which I appreciate, is really didn't make Napoleon out to be like, a, oh, he's so magnificent. He's a brilliant. He's a, he's a hero, right? So they did make him an asshole. They did make him insecure. They made him uh, egotistical. They did have him be uh, a strategist for at least one battle. I would at least like a few more because I know he won more than one freaking battle. Which, in here, they did show that he was... Con they didn't show. They told you that he was winning. They didn't really show a lot sure, of his yeah, winning. He's got one of the like, records of military wins still, right. even today, I think. Maybe, right, but. so I feel like he's that's more of what you should have spread on about. Not, not his relationship so much. His embarrassing personal life. Was, isn't what made him famous, right? It was the conquering stuff. Yeah. And him being banished to an island, coming back, being banished again. <laughs> and, you know, he just, like, refuses to just to just stop. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I found it entertaining, even though it's not what I expected. Uh, I did not expect Joaquin's plain-ass American ing accent with his cringy, you know, mm, 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 moments when he wanted to get it on. He was pretty goofy, and then the next moment he was diabolical. So, yeah, it was kind of all over the place. In the movie, I didn't t walk away thinking, wow, this guy was a, a, he was a dickhead, but he was con he was conquering left and right. He, he made Europe bend to her knees. and kind of felt like a simp you felt bad yeah, for, but then just, again, you want to smack him and tell him to man yeah. up. 
It didn't come off as a conqueror. It came off as a dude like who's obsessed with a chick who wasn't obsessed He's with him. Like, That's what I wanted you to think. He won one or two battles, and you know that was about it. And then he lost at the end, and he was banished twice. I'm like, damn, he sounds like a fucking loser. How is this dude ever famous? We know now that it wasn't super accurate to uh, to the real story. It was more or less accurate. It was just <clears throat> we didn't focus on things. I mean, if we put. Fo- there's plenty of boring aspects about his life we could have focused on, but there's a lot more shit that you could have focused on and you just didn't. I mean, most of it probably happened. I'm gonna be honest. A lot of it in some way probably happened. Ridley's got a way of making things realistic when it comes to historical events. This is our personal opinion. We're not professional movie critics, but I was expecting to see, which we did see some pretty cool action moments, but that wasn't the main story. Um, and it was a bit of a bummer that we spend more time on one aspect of his life that he was not known for, uh, well, at least, you know, famous for, um, we went a different route, but that was, that's our personal opinion. I will say out of most Ridley Scott movies, I think this one, I was the least entertained out of all of his movies, yeah, probably. Like, I'm thinking, I'm, honestly, he's got great movies. Very good movies. He's got awesome fucking movies, and this movie wasn't terribly bad. It wasn't. But a lot of his other movies weren't so hard to watch in some parts. Yeah. And he's the only one who could have done a great Napoleon movie because he's a Frenchy fanatic. Yeah. And he's a good director. He, he's, he got knows, he's seasoned. He's a seasoned director. He, he gets the aesthetic, pleasing, uh, you know, aspects of, right. of history. And he does it, it's just this one, I don't know, I think it was supposed to be his crown jewel, and it wasn't. Anyways, guys, that was our review to Napoleon, and we'll see you guys in the next And another thing.